What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as the D365 Geek, and today we are talking about Power Automate, we're talking about the CDS Current Environment Connector, and we're going to look at the Getter Record Select Query. So in my previous video we looked at get a record, but there are a couple of optional parameters that we can specify, one of them being select query. Now select query allows you to just pull back the information that you need. So you can specify in different um, attributes or, or properties and you, can, uh, and you can bring those fields back specifically. So those are the fields you have inside your CDS environment or your D365 environment. So let's take a look at it. So I'm in Power Automate here. I have a CDS flow which is inside a solution and therefore I have access to the current environment connector. We have a trigger and this trigger is on update of accounts and it's going to run when we change the telephone one um, field inside CDS. We're going to click on new step and we're going to type in common data service and we'll choose this one here, which is the current environment selector. Um, and then we'll go down to get a record. Now in here, we need to specify in our entity name and our ID. So these are two required fields, but I can click on show advanced options. And then when we get select query here. So in the entity name, I'm gonna choose contacts. Uh, I'm gonna wait for that to catch up, contacts. And the item ID, we're going to use the primary contact. So I'm going to type primary into here. I'm going to primary contact value. So this is going to look at the primary contact, which is a lookup or a relationship to another record uh, on the contacts entity. And in there, we are then going to use the select query. So select says limit the properties returned while retrieving data. Now, you may be asking to yourself, why would I want to limit the the fields coming back. Why would I want to limit the data coming back? There are many reasons why you'd want to. So you could do it because you want to, um, you know, you may be running this flow multiple times or like, you know, hundreds of times a day. You don't need all sort of like 500 fields to come back to you or 200 fields to come back to you if you're only ever using three. So it'll increase performance uh, and it'll make your workflow or your flow a lot easier to manage and easier to, to look at. If you look at the dynamic content I've got here um, for just when the record is created updated, we've got these things like deprecated process stage, deprecated traverse path, we've got account, account name, account number, account rating, address one. We have all of these fields, all the address ones, then we'll do all the address twos. You know, very few companies ever use address two. Um, for a lot of their things. Um, you know, a lot of these fields are in Dynamics or CDS by default and just never really used by a lot of companies. So when you're choosing this, would it would it not be nicer to only have three options to choose as opposed to the sort of like, you know, 80 that I've got here or like 100 that I've got here? So that's where we can use this, um, this select query. So to do this, you have to put in the names of the fields you want to pull back uh, and you need those schema names. So if I switch over to Dynamics, um, I've got a account here and I've got a primary contact here of Bruce Wayne. Click on that, we'll go to the contact record. So we could pull through a couple of these pieces of information. So what we could do is we could pull through um, a first name and last name. We could pull through uh, email address, business phone, uh, and age, and things like that. So what I will do is I'm going to use my trusty tool, Level Up, a uh, fantastic tool. Um, I'll link to it in the description below, but this is a tool that saves so much time because I do this all the time. I'm going to click on logical names. So what this will do is this will show all the schema names or all logical names for all of these fields that I want to I want to pull back. So, uh, and then I can just copy and paste these out. So if I copy and paste uh, first name, we'll put that into here and we'll separate them by a comma and no spaces. We'll choose last name, last name. Then we will get, uh, let's get email address one in there. And then we will get uh, age as well, so Matt age. So you can see this is a custom field that I created. Um, it's got the prefix of Matt, and that's why it says that. We're going to age at the, at the end. So let's let's test this flow out. So if I click, I'll perform the trigger action. I'm going to go back to my account record, 
and this flow triggers when the account record telephone number is updated. So that's running now. So if I update the telephone number, let me take a few digits out of this and hit save. Uh, we'll hit ignore and save because there's a duplicate in the system which needs to fix. Uh, and then we can wait for this to trigger and, and get this to run successfully. So we see the green bar, that's all good. So we've seen that's been updated, that's good. Get the record. <clears throat> and now we have a subset of data. So we have we have email address come back, first name, last name, and age. So no longer do we have like, you know, 100 fields coming back to us. We only have four. So we have, have the email address, the first name, last name, and the age. So four fields are coming back, which is much easier to work with than say the 100 plus fields that I'm getting back usually when I query a record. So if you want to make your flows neater, if you want to make your flows more efficient, if you want to make your flows run quicker and, and everything else, then I would suggest using the select query getting used to it, um, pulling back some data. Inevitably, you'll you'll start running your flow, you'll use a select query, and then you go, oh no, I need this other field. In this case, it's really easy to just go and add it in. Um, I know I've done this all the time when I work with Word templates, um, which you know uh, is, is something that I love to work with. I'll always forget a relationship or forget a field that I need, and then I'll have to go bring that in um, later on. This at least is really easy. You can just go back and you can add that in and it will not only make your life so much easier when you are querying records and then wanting to use that data later on. It'll make your flows neater, it'll make people being able to read them and update them a lot easier and you'll make them more efficient. So I suggest you all start using Select Query. It's a fantastic tool to allow you to just get the records you need uh, or get the fields that you need or the properties or attributes, whatever you want to call them, um, back uh, and then you can use them later on. So I hope this video is useful. Um, if you do use Select Query at the moment, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, if you don't, let me know why you don't um, in the comments down below as well. I always like to hear both sides of an argument. Um, if you did like this video, if you could like and share it with your friends, it would be much appreciated. If you've not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you next time.